our clients uh, are coming up with and we can learn from them. Sometimes we learn from our clients' ingenuity about things that are bad ideas and sometimes we learn about things that are good ideas. And so Kyle and I discussed doing this session uh, to allow other people to learn from what we see and probably all of you who do farm assessments see these kinds of design by what you can find solutions uh, on the farms that you go to. So just a heads up, we're not endorsing everything necessarily that we show. We just want to give kind of the, the raw information and we'll talk about uh, maybe some of the safety issues and concerns that we might see and how we as agribility professionals can support our clients in preventing secondary injuries and the safety as they make their own assistive technology. Kyle, do you have anything you want to share before we dive in? No, I think we're ready to jump right in. Okay. So one of the beauties is simplicity. And this is one of the easiest things, pipe foam insulation from the hardware store. I don't know, do you have this stuff at, in Georgia, Kyle? We do, you? even though uh, we're not very uh, cold, we, we do still have it. Okay, so it wraps nicely around punches and chisels and small handled tools, even around the wire rims on baskets and buckets for people with hand injuries to be able to grip something that's soft and larger diameter and it's cheap and it works good. Tractor grab bars are a pretty common need. And so here I have a picture of a farmer working. He's got a lowered step with rubber sides and he's looking there on the tractor. Where can he bolt a grab handle on? On the blue tractor, this is an example where a farmer took a piece of one inch diameter pipe and he smashed the ends of it flat and drilled a hole through and then he bent it into an arch shape and bolted it to the side of his tractor so that when he reaches up, he's got a good solid handhold. It's going to take a fairly thin walled pipe, probably a sixteenth of an inch thick, or maybe up to an eighth if you're going to smash it flat like that. Uh, this is an example of a farmer built elevator. If anyone here remembers coming to Michigan for the, assist, for the National Training Workshop in 2009, we visited this farm. And there are some uh, safety concerns about this. It's definitely functional. And isn't that what we see usually, Kyle, as the highest priority with this assistive technology? Is it functional? I got a problem. And so definitely. how am I going to solve it? And in the focus on the problem and the solution, sometimes the questions of what if a child or a pet or uh, anyone gets underneath this when it's being lowered and the the questions of what if a, a cable breaks some of the really basic concerns in the elevator and the man lift industry that you want to have a uh, secondary catchment and with this farmer i i did provide him with uh from my own resources actually i was just concerned enough about this uh, a cable catch that he could put on here that if his cable winch would fail, it would uh, catch and hold him. Something similar to what roofers would wear that if they would have a accident on a roof, it's a fall arrester. He never put it on. I took it to him, I gave it to him and uh, he didn't want it. I left it there. I said, well, if something happens to you, I at least want this device here documenting that I addressed this with you. Here's another one of his inventions, which I don't know if anybody's uh, very involved in the mobile home moving industry, but this is a mobile home axle and the front hitch of a mobile home trailer. 
which is bolted to the wall of his shed. It's actually very securely attached. Down on the ground is a three quarters inch thick plate of steel. I don't know where this man came up with that, uh, but it was about four feet square. So he stood this axle up vertically, welded a two by two square steel tubing, quarter inch thick wall to it and put a cable winch on. He can raise himself up and swing around. He can get into his John Deere Gator, onto his tractor, onto his lawnmower, or into his wheelchair, uh, all from this one lift. There's multiple concerns. I didn't even know where to start with the, the safety on this one for uh, if his welds would break, if the bearing would fail on that axle and well, he did the calculations in his mind how much a mobile home trait mobile home weighed and how much that axle could support and uh he he did use this successfully this is lower risk uh pretty comfortable low to the ground how do you get close enough to the vegetables without kneeling and crawling if you have a back injury or bad knees or hips and i have found that with devices like this, he took uh, four two by fours and screwed them all together and put on a set of wheels. Usually pushing yourself backwards is more comfortable than trying to tug yourself forwards just by how our the anatomy of our legs work. And so I thought this was a pretty Pretty simple idea in a fishing boat seat. This, I'm going to just point out a few things here. This is a board off of a school desk that David fastened to the armrest on his fishing boat swivel seat that he mounted on his lawn tractor. And this is his seating and positioning as his neuropathy progressed and he be, his torso became weaker. He needed more support. And so he could lean against this. It kept him in the seat. And he also used a, a cable winch to lift himself and a barn door track mounted in the rafters. Uh, there are uh, cable lifts and chain lifts that are certified for lifting people. And that is our standard recommendation when uh, we are providing funding or working with Voc Rehab for lifts. And that is not what was used in this on this farm. So the swivel seat, I'll just point that out. Very convenient. I don't know if you've ever recommended people put a swivel seat on a lawnmower. Uh, he has a sprayer on the back of his mower, but if he didn't, you can actually swivel the seat all the way around and get on from the back instead of climbing up over the deck of the mower. And so a swivel seat on a lawnmower can be a great accommodation. The fishing boat swivels, you can buy them at Walmart for about $15 or on Amazon pretty regularly, around 20. I'm just going to stop giving prices because they're all going to be wrong in two weeks. But uh, it gives a ballpark idea anyway. And uh, this sprayer is on the this lawn tractor. It became more and more difficult for him to operate his large tractor. So he outfitted his lawn tractor. He could go between his blueberry rows. There's a dome that the spray goes under the dome and it keeps the spray off of the blueberry plants and kills the weeds around the base. So he didn't, it really worked very well for him to control the weeds in his blueberry fields. This is a boat dock positioned around, or beehives positioned around the boat dock. When this beekeeper needs to inspect the brood boxes in the beehives, she can unstack, she can go up on the dock and unstack the taller boxes, and then she can step off of the dock and do her inspections without needing to bend all the way down. Uh, if 
if these hives were down lower to the ground, it would be quite difficult for her to be basically bent at a 90 degree angle at the at her lower back to do her inspections. And so this allows her to be in a much more comfortable position. And we have a hydraulic lift cart that she can pump up. So if she takes this box off of the hive, she can set it on and lower it down and then take the next box. And basically she's just scooting her boxes straight across from her hives onto this lift cart. And then when it's time to put them back, she can do the reverse, take the box off, slide it onto her hive, pump it up to a higher elevation and slide the next one across. Here we have lots of farmer built grab bars, pretty sturdy. I don't really have any concerns about the safety of this. It makes a nice mounting spot for his lights and he has a flip up, small flip up step that he added on here to get in and out of his John Deere Gator. Here we have a rolling dolly with a chop saw on it and a drill press. It's kind of cluttered, but he's able to move this with him working from his wheelchair. Uh, he's not reaching up at a workbench. He, he can take it close to the project he's working on and save a lot of moving around his shop. This is a stand-up planter made out of PVC pipe and a piece of wire and some heavy duty rubber bands down at the bottom. So the seeds can be dropped in the top and then the wire is squeezed or pulled and it pulls this V-shaped point open and drops the seed or the plant spreads the soil apart and drops in the seed. These are something that can be purchased but it's not too complicated to build your own if you're if you have more time than money. I I think that the nature of farming, depending on the type of farming, but there's busier and quieter seasons, whether you're making hay, managing beef cattle or uh, growing other crops. So in the down season, a lot of farmers will build their own assistive devices. This is a man lift that was from Life Essentials. It was removed from the farmer, took it off the tractor and mounted it on a trailer used a big old log for a counterweight. And as long as the trailer is hitched up to his pickup truck, it's quite stable and he can stand on the platform and raise up and step across onto his whatever tractor he's gonna be operating for that day. This is a uh, farmer built I don't know that it's assistive technology. It's his uh, walking therapy device. He spent some time at the Mary Freebed Rehabilitation Hospital in Grand Rapids, and they had the walking beams that he could hold on to, and his feet have the tendency to splay out to the sides and twist his knees. And so he built his own therapy platform to keep his feet straight as he walks. Uh, Don has muscular dystrophy and struggles to keep his shoulders back in a good posture while he's working on his farm and in his shop. And boy, I've been thinking for years what we could do to help support his torso. But anything that, uh, like the springs back, I've showed a number of times. If he wears the springs back, it presses on his legs to hold his torso up and then it makes it hard for him to walk. So we haven't come up with anything better than his own solution, which is a backpack with 11 pounds in it that helps hold his shoulders in a better posture. And right beside him is he built his own air cleaner. He puts a shop vac in it and it sucks the dusty air when he's sanding, sucks the dusty air through the filter and blows the fresh air out the top to help him have better ventilation in his shop. Uh, this device came about from an Amish farmer who had to 
he had a really good market early in the season for selling small uh, pumpkins. And so he would go out and just pick, walk through his field and pick the few that were ripe. It was before the main season, so he didn't have his regular workers hired to come out and pick up the pumpkins. So basically, it's a pitchfork with bent over tines and some rubber tubing slid over so that it doesn't poke the pumpkins or the melons or the squash. And then there's a robo handle, 90 degree grip handle on it. So it's pretty easy to roll a pumpkin or a melon onto it and then raise it up without bending down to the ground. The farmer that originally needed this had uh, cerebral palsy and if he had to go bend all the way to the ground, he would fall, lose his balance and fall. But with this device, he could get his pumpkins up above his knee, close to his waist, and then take a hold with the other hand and put it into the bin. Uh, these are walkers modified to have forearm supports so that people walking on rough terrain have something to lean on. This is a cattle handling system built with T-posts, some wooden posts and cattle panels. The Basically the same concept as the commercially available systems with a long gate that swings right inside of a curved uh, fence structure. And you see this path here. Uh, Dwayne allows his cattle to walk through this system back and forth between two paddocks. So they're pretty accustomed to coming through here. And when it's time for him to work the cattle, he puts the headlock in place and basically calls them and they come in and he can catch them and work them through without having a rodeo. And this is the other side of it, headed up into where he puts his headlock. This is a lazy Susan turntable for the farmer's feet. He uses a life essentials man lift. And when he's transferring from the seat of the man lift into the seat of his tractor, his feet would always get tangled up. And so by placing his feet on this rotating turntable, it doesn't twist his knees and legs so badly when he makes the transfer. This is a farmer built man lift using a 12 volt hydraulic power unit and a cherry picker for lifting engines. He put a parallel linkage on the back of the lift seat to keep it level and not dump him out as it raises up. He positions this right outside of the tractor door, raises himself up, and then a assistant rolls it forward so that he can get in the cab door. I've heard of a number of people using this concept. It only works well on smooth concrete. Uh, this was a farmer that had a hand injury and couldn't push the button on the seat belt. But with this tab wearing a glove, you could push on it with their palm. Kyle doesn't have this trouble in Georgia, but in Michigan, it's a big project watering livestock in the winter. And usually the people are dragging water hoses and trying to drain them, pull them, drag them over a rafter in the barn to drain them or take them into their basement. This farmer attached a long PVC pipe at a constant downgrade and put valves at each pen so he could turn on his water hydrant, walk down the line, water each, pen of animals and then leave the valves open and shut off the hydrant and it would all drain dry every day. The little bit of water that sits in the pipe isn't enough to plug it up and it quickly thaws and runs out with the water when he's watering the animals. Gravity, downhill, there can't be any sags too much that they fill up with water or you'll have a problem. So it's important to have it well graded. Walk-in feeder, instead of going in with the livestock, this farmer put a gate hinge on the end of his feeder and he can go in and grain the cattle. 
without going in the pen with them. Raised garden beds using old bridge timbers and boards at the end. Uh, this is a camp for veterans to go hunting and have a place in the countryside to get out to. And they made their own raised beds. This is a fold up ladder, a six foot step ladder reaches to the second to last combine step. Pretty common. And actually the cheaper lightweight aluminum step ladders work best because they're lightweight and easy to flip up and down, climb up, pull a rope and use a bungee cord to strap it. It gives a little bit of slope and more steps. It's less than a hundred dollar accommodation. This is called a bud box using the nature of cattle that they like to try escaping the same way that they just got caught. So the cattle would follow this uh, path here. This gate would be standing open. The cattle would come running into this pen. And in the meantime, this gate gets shut. They turn around to try getting out and the way out is through this other gate over here which is standing open so the cattle come in turn around to try to get out and go back out and they end up running down the alley towards your trailer or your working chute so this is more a system or a concept you can look it up google the idea of a bud box and people who are uh, Skilled cattlemen can work a lot of cattle without uh, running and making noise by using this concept. This is a manure tray that the farmer put underneath the roost. More than half of the manure in a chicken pen uh, is dropped while the chickens are roosting. And so this platform down under the roost catches the manure. And then this is the outside of the coop. A trap door opens up and the skid steer can be parked right here and use a garden hoe and drag the manure out from under the roost into the skid steer bucket with minimal shoveling. Uh, this farmer has a drive-by feed bunk that he can use his TMR mixer and give silage and grain to his cattle to keep it dry. He built lids and then created a winch and pulley and cable system so that he can raise all the lids from one place and he's in process of installing a powered winch. This is a greenhouse cart. It works great for a uh, outdoor walker. It can carry his cat, it can carry feed bags, it can carry gardening supplies and this is a very helpful accommodation. And I think this is my last slide for now. It's a utility crane mounted on a, a trailer so that this farmer can, he also sells fertilizer and he can load the bags onto his trailer using a crane instead of a forklift. And then when he arrives at his customer's sites, he can also unload them even with his muscular dystrophy. He doesn't have to use multiple small bags any longer. Okay, Kyle, I think you're up. You're muted. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that way I can just go through it um, and flip through the slides without you having to do it. Oh. All right, so um, this farmer in Georgia had found a commercially available truck step that you mount on the side of your truck bed to allow you to um, reach over the bed of the truck and grab stuff from inside your truck bed box. Um, and so he purchased that and then um, ended up mounting it on his tractor step to give him an extended tractor step to make that distance from the ground to the first step a lot shorter. Um, he just used two, place, two pieces of flat steel um, to mount it there to the end of his John Deere tractor step. This farmer um, was having trouble getting on and off of his zero turn lawnmower 
Um, he is able to stand up from his power wheelchair, but it was very unstable as he was getting onto the seat of that zero turn lawnmower. And so he fabricated some uh, grab handles that mount to the rollover protection structure um, and then into the frame where the front wheels attach and just made it out of pipe and some flat um, bar steel. And it provides him um, a lot better of uh, stability while he's getting on and off his lawnmower. Um, he does have to bring it back to where his power chair is to be able to transfer back into the power chair. Um, but having to climb over a deck on a, on a zero turn lawnmower can create a, a very uh, uneasy footing and can be quite difficult for some farmers. Uh, Ned showed earlier the ladder built on to the um, combine ladder itself. For this farmer in Georgia, he ended up finding some warehouse steps um, after he needed further assistance getting on and off his combine because you can see that ladder is just straight up and down on combines usually. And so he, as you would find in a retail box store to be able to reach up higher on items, the warehouse steps, um, he got these from a local place and put them out in his field and it creates a much easier slope for him to get up into the uh, combine. He does have to uh, come back to the same place that he left the field from. So when he drives away and goes out into the field, um, when he comes back, he has to back into where the location is of the warehouse steps because of the head on the combine. I'm going to show several different examples today of wheelchair ramps for tractors. Um, a lot of times farmers with a spinal cord injury, they need a way to be able to get up into their tractor. And ultimately we want them to have a commercially available lift, um, but that may not be possible due to funding issues. Um, the farmer may not be able to afford it themselves or funding sometimes can take a while to get. And so they need something for the interim to be able to continue to get on and off their tractor. This wheelchair ramp is actually built into the side of a, a natural slope in the ground. So it's, it's uh, real easy for the farmer to go up um, a little hill to get on the wheelchair ramp and then it's not as far off the ground and is able to go out um, to the end of that wheelchair ramp. And then he has a removable piece of wood that will stay on the end of, uh, end of the ramp itself and then go over onto the platform step area of the tractor. So that way he's able to get his wheelchair closer into the actual platform of the tractor um, and then make the transfer. He then has a bar, a grab bar um, that stays on his tractor that he can push the wheelchair back um, off of the tractor platform onto the ramp. And then he's able to, to use that gra same grab bar to push the, uh, that, that piece of wood that you see there that is movable, um, push it away from the tractor. So then he's able to go out into the field and do what he needs to in the field, come back, um, and then he pull, uses the grab bar that stays on the tractor all the time um, to, to pull that wood there onto the platform of the tractor and then be able to pull his wheelchair up close to make the transfer back over. Kyle, does that farmer do that independently or does he have a helper? Uh, he does that completely independently. Um, that same farmer ended up getting a newer tractor um, with an enclosed cab a little bit larger and we were able to get a life essential lift for him um, several years down the road. But he ended up making his own hand controls for this next tractor. Um, it's a hydrostatic transmission tractor. Um, it has a forward pedal and then a reverse pedal that you have to depress both of them, you know, depending if you want to go forward or backwards. And so he used some pipe that he had in his shop, um, hinged them at the bottom there, and then bought some shift control linkages off of Amazon, um, bent them to the angles that he needed and put those there. It works really well for him. I've actually driven this tractor a lot and I use the hand controls when I'm in it. It's very simple. Um, the tractor has a loader on it uh, and it just requires just a little bit of movement, just a slight movement of your hand to be able to alternate between going forward and reverse. So it's really nice for loader work, um, even better than just using the pedals yourself. This ramp, um, the farmer built and left outside in his field, but it allowed him to be able to transfer up into its truck. Uh, sometimes those seats can be $10,000 was my most recent quote on a, the seat that comes all the way out of a pickup truck to allow someone to transfer in and then raise them up. And so this is a, a much quicker um, and cheaper alternative. The farmer is able to drive the wheelchair um, up the ramp and then transfer over into the seat of the truck. 
and then go into town, go check on uh, the fields. And if he needs to pick up something in town, he can call the store. They can have it ready for him, bring it out to him. Um, then he can come home and then transfer back into his wheelchair. Uh, this is another example of a wheelchair ramp for a tractor that we, um, when we went out and did our initial site visit, we ended up seeing um, this already built on the farm. This one you can see because of the flat ground, the way it's not built into the slope of the hill, uh, it does have to have a much steeper rise on it. And then you do have the, the question of, we're probably gonna need some railings on it that the farmer hadn't put on it because it um, you know, would be very easy to fall off of it as you're going up the ramp. Um, it does at least have a nice turn in it to de decrease the amount of rise. Um, it would be nicer if it was a little bit wider, but when the farmer got up to the top of it, um, he was able to transfer over onto the fender of his tractor that you can see in the right um, hand picture. And then when he would transfer to the fender of the tractor, and then he would go into the seat of the tractor. Um, his legs were getting uh, scraped on that inner fender well as he was making the transfer. Um, he wasn't feeling them uh, as he was transferring, and so scratches would occur and infection. And in the bottom left-hand picture, you can see we actually ended up going and fabricating this ourselves for him, but it was a place for his feet to go as he made that transfer um, to the fender of the tractor. So that way he's able to uh, move the feet and then transfer into the seat of the tractor um, and keep from scratching it on that inner fender well. We had a farmer who bought a sprayer um, and it just had a wand sprayer. Uh, on it and he wanted to be able to, to use a boom sprayer with it and take it out in his field to be able to spray his fields. And so he built a frame for the spray um, hoses with just using PVC that then hooks onto the back of the tailgate of his UTV um, and then has some simple hose connections and spray nozzles that he um, used with the clamps there to be able to use a boom sprayer as he drives along in his field. Uh, Ned mentioned it earlier, showed an example of um, a fence line feeder that the farmer actually is able to walk into. This feeder um, that our farmer built in Georgia is, is out of uh, wood two by fours um, and two by sixes and uses feed troughs, the plastic feed bunks. Um, and the cat, it, it keeps him away from having to go into all the mud where the calves are going to come up and then stick their heads through to eat. Um, and then you can see he has a concrete floor there that makes it a much safer travel path as he's putting the feed into the, the feeders. Grow barrels have been very popular. Um, I know people probably have seen these on Pinterest a lot. We've had several farmers build them themselves. Um, if you find a 55 gallon food safe drum, you take a circular saw and cut slits into it, basically just the, the width of the blade. And then you heat it up with a little um, propane torch and wedge two by fours into it, two of them. And then it creates that trough there um, that's large enough for you to be able to plant lettuces, strawberries, um, and any other your smaller plants into those troughs and they grow out of the side of the barrel. And you can also grow some in the top of the barrel. Um, on the right-hand picture, it's kind of hard to see, but they have um, a PVC waterer in there. And so it's a PVC pipe with small holes drilled into it. They're able to fill it up with water and then it'll be a slow release um, so you don't have to worry about watering it multiple times a day. I just had an idea for that, Kyle. What's that? They could set that barrel on the Lazy Susan turntable that my farmer had made for his feet. And you there could you just go. rotate rotate the barrel and do all your harvest from one spot. Yeah, and then you have a chair there and not have to move it around the whole time. Yeah, that'd be nice. So this is not as much um, farm assistive technology, but this is something I saw on a farm. The farmer loves to barbecue. Um, he makes some, some uh, famous barbecue or bar Brunswick stew in this county. And so when he had a stroke and was no longer able to do a lot of his barbecue or getting on and off of his barbecue trailer, he had a um, ran fabricated for it. And it's just a, it's a long ramp that has an, connected to an electric winch. So he's able to raise and lower it, go up that ramp with his mobility scooter. And then on the right hand picture, you can see an up close view of his Brunswick stew pot that he uses. And with that stroke, um, he was not able to use one of his arms. And so it was um, very tiring for him to try and stir that Brunswick stew all day long. And so he ended up having a custom fabricated 
uh, stir put on it. And so it just makes your imagination run wild. You know, what can you be doing in the kitchen um, adaptations for farmers? Um, so that way they can help out with the cooking around the house. Um, so that way they're not having to stir, but it's an electric motor on the top um, with a shaft that can go up and down. And then the spoon attaches or stirrer attaches to the bottom and he's able to let that run slowly all day long um, as that Brunswick stew heats up. So I thought that was pretty um, ingenious what he thought of to be able to allow him to be able to cook for uh, his community still. One uh, piece of assistive technology that we really um, try and get funded for our farmers is a mobile grain bin. And this just allows the farmer to be able to take, um, take this mobile grain bin to a feed mill, get it filled up because a lot of our farmers, um, they're trying to buy feed in bulk and they end up filling 55 gallon barrels. And that takes a long time um, trying to unload those. Some of them are actually picking them up with their um, themselves, those 55 gallon drums and pulling them onto the front end loader of their tractor um, to get them up and down out of the back of their truck. And so it can take a lot of strain on the body with these mobile grain bins. They can drive it to the feed mill, fill it up and then open the chute on the back of it. Um, and so we had gotten this for one of our farmers, but he realized that um, it, the grain clogs up in it a lot. And he gotten tired of beating up, beating on it with his hand to make the grain fall out or using a mallet to try and get the grain to fall out. So he bought a motor, a real cheap motor off of Amazon, as you can see in the, the bottom right hand picture, and took a piece of angle iron to create an off balance weight there on the motor, which caused it to shake and vibrate. Um, also on Amazon on the top, he bought a receiver for his um, batteries that he uses on all of his battery operated tools, um, like his DeWalt drill, angle grinder and stuff. So that way he has multiple batteries and doesn't have to try and get a specific one for just this um, grain bin and he can um, recharge them easily. And so he took a wire, um, wired it up to a momentary switch and then ran it to the motor. And so that way he just presses that momentary switch. Um, it shakes the whole grain bin, the feed comes out, um, and then it can release that switch and it'll stop shaking. And that really allows him to be able to go a lot quicker with his feeding and not have to worry about beating the side of that grain bin. Uh, this farmer is also having to do a lot of fencing. And when he was stretching his woven wire fence, it would end up bending a lot in the middle or sagging over to the side. Um, he was using his tractor to stretch it. And so he, as he would stretch, he'd have to get on and off the tractor to straighten that um, fence up as it, as it bent over in the ground or got hung on something, some roots. And so this uh, fence holder he built is out of two by sixes and it has two boards that bolt to either side of the woven wire fence and then a skid on the bottom. I mean, it stands up while he is stretching it with his tractor. And so it moves along with him as well. So it's not stationary. So as he stretches, it's going to slide along the ground and keep that fence up straight. Um, and so that way he can then secure it to the post and then go along with the T-post um, and do the T-post clips. One thing we found, um, the older style water spigots can be very hard to turn on and off for a farmer, especially if like a worker comes by um, and over tightens them down for the, for the night. And then the farmer comes out and has arthritis, may not be able to turn that, those knob style water spigots. And so just taking a simple um, wooden dowel and drilling two holes in it and putting two machine bolts there um, will, that will fit in between the spokes on the uh, water spigots can allow you a lot more leverage when turning on and off the water. And so that way, um, you, if someone comes by who tightens it, over tightens it, you can loosen it yourself. I do recommend if you're having to replace water spigots from the old ones, they have new style lever ones um, that are much easier to turn on and off for someone with arthritis. The spring loaded gate latch, um, our farmers have made. Um, I've seen these on actually several farms they came up with just a little different styles. They made a, they used a gate hinge and turned it sideways um, and a piece of rebar there and put a spring in between it and then drilled a hole through the rebar at the very end of it with a little bolt um, to give them a little handle for it. But as they're going, they're going in and out of this gate very frequently throughout the day. And so they were tired of having to use the chain around and put it through the slot all the time. Um, and so that spring latch just allows them to go in quickly and they drilled a little tiny hole in the post for that rebar to go into. Um, and so they're able to go in and out of that feeding area quickly and make sure that gate is secured. 
All right, well, we're going to open it up um, for a little question and answer time. If anybody wants to go back and look at any of the assistive technology we, we've shown, we'd be glad to go back to the specific slide. Um, and then if you have any questions, we're glad to share whatever information that we know about the piece of the assistive technology. Okay, we do have um, a question in the chat. It says, I recognize it's not possible to have a lift mounted on every piece of machinery, but I also worry about emergencies like an engine fire or something like that. I'm interested in how you frame and discuss this risk with the farmers who are using these independently mounted lifts and stationary ramps. Um, I do see Ned did put in their fire extinguishers are required, but I don't know if you had any other um, comments for that. Um, we, we actually proposed this idea to a group of senior engineering design students one year, um, looking at a fire suppression system for, for a tractor in case of an emergency. And there were several different options they came up with. One neat thing was NASCAR actually uses um, a f onboard fire suppression system in case of a fire while they're out there on the track. Um, it has nozzles that go ahead and spray the whole engine bay down to uh, reduce the risk of the fire growing or possibly it can put out the fire completely. And so it'd be really neat if that was able to be put on, um, put on the tractors because it is something that you worry about. Ultimately, these farmers, they're going to keep farming one way or the other, whether that we help them do it easily um, or not. And so it's going to be a decision that they have to make themselves. But if worse comes to worse, you know, they may have to pull themselves off of the tractor um, to do an emergency, you know, emergency dismount um, and then pull themselves away from the tractor in case of a fire. Um, but like Ned said, making sure that you have fire extinguishers on the tractor at all times um, and in an accessible place for you to be able to get from the operator station. Doug Verhoeven is a farmer here in Michigan, and you see the yellow rope. That's his emergency. He's got a spinal cord injury, but he said in the event of a fire, if I got that rope, I can lower myself to the ground without a crash and drag myself away. Uh, Kyle made a comment that's really the maybe one of the reasons that we're doing this session, that when we have concerns about a farmer's safety, we need to address that in the wisest way that we can. But ultimately, the the farmers are motivated, powerfully motivated, and they want to do their work. And they're going to figure out a way to do it. And I view my role as one of encouragement that there's a right way forward. And I really admire these people for their ambition and desire to keep working try to keep the conversation positive instead of saying you really shouldn't be doing that uh, or you know you're going to get hurt if you keep doing that everybody's telling the farmer that and and he's just tired of hearing it and he's going to do what he's going to do so i try to come at it from a, a positive perspective hey i saw this uh like that guy with the elevator and the cable winch hey i saw this fall arrester cable i think it'd be a great addition to your your lift and then you can keep using it uh, he still didn't listen to me but it's our professional uh, responsibility i think to to definitely have that conversation so i don't know if you've have you seen anything that your farmers have done kyle other than fire extinguishers and maybe a secondary escape route a charged cell phone? How's that? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely beneficial. And then even that Life 360 app, um, depending on your cell phone uh, service in the area, can uh, can show people where you know where you're located at in case of an emergency. Those come in um, handy. Having a way to disconnect the implement from your tractor because sometimes it's, the fire doesn't start on the tractor. Um, but if you can have a way to quickly but with some of the quick hitches, be able to, to um, pull that baler off of the tractor and get that tractor away from the baler. Because ultimately a baler can be replaced, you cannot be. Um, and the balers are a place that fires happen a lot. And so if you can just simply drive away, um, that can be one of the best ways to reduce your risk 
that you have on the farm. Yeah, I never thought about that quick disconnect on something like a hay baler that's sort of notorious. You know, I, yeah, one of my clients just told me he, he had a bearing go out, and caught his baler on fire. Yep. Oh. Happens all the time. Um, another thing, too, th with the assistive technology that we've shown, a lot of times these are just something that the farmer's like, I need to be able to do this job and I have to get it done. Um, and it's a quick solution that allows them to continue on the task at hand um, and not put a little, not take a lot of time away from their farm work. But ultimately, they they're the people who've sat there for hours thinking about how what solution can be designed um, to address the need that they're having on the farm. And so, sitting there talking to them, they may not be able to have the resources to fabricate it themselves. But if you get the idea from them, a lot of times we can take our expertise and background and their idea and make a, you know, if a commercially available product's not available, is to be able to design something for them, then have it fabricated and it can be much safer than the alternatives they're doing then because they, you know, they've experienced it. They've thought of the ways a hundred times trying to figure out how to address the problem that they're facing. And they just may need just a little bit of help to get it fabricated. When we have the attitude that we are partners with the farmer, we're not the smartest guy in the room there to tell them what to do, but that we really appreciate their ingenuity and how they're thinking and build that kind of rapport, we'll be more likely to, to be received as we uh, bring our advice and suggestions per se. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anybody um, have any questions they want to ask verbally? You can just raise your hand and I can unmute you. In the chat, there's a, looks like Garland gave us a, a link. Yeah, to life slide. Is my screen showing? It is. The life slide. It's showing extended traffic uh, step. You have okay. to stop, share your slideshow, and then go back to it. Yeah. All right. So here's the life slide uh, that we, Garland, put this link in the chat. So this would be like an escape slide from an upper story building, but maybe some concept like this. Did your students think of something like this, Kyle? They did. That was actually one of their proposals um, was a, an inflatable slide off the tractor. Okay. Have you seen any uh, good design but what you can find ideas since March when we were together, Kyle? Um, anything anything new? Bit. One thing you mentioned, um, it wasn't wasn't the assistive technology itself, but it was the therapy um, board ramp there that the farmer was using to keep it, um, to keep his feet straight as he was walking. One of our farmers uh, had a spinal cord injury and came home uh, and was supposed to be going to physical therapy, but they found that the best thing for them was tractor therapy. We were able to get a lift on their tractor pretty um, pretty quickly once they got home from a spinal cord injury. And using those uh, controls in the tractor, having to um, push in the clutch, do the brakes, change gears, it was amazing what um, the strength was comparatively to their actual physical therapy. And they call it tractor therapy now, and it's going and getting on that tractor and using it. Um, and their physical therapists have been astound astounded by the amount of progress that this farmer's made. So I thought that was a pretty neat way that we can incorporate our jobs, but also healing at the same time to be able to um, continue moving forward after an injury. Don St. Clair was one of my first clients when I worked for Breaking New Ground in 1998, 99. And his doctor told him that he had had a hand injury and he had animals to feed and he was carrying pails and, and just doing things with his hand, holding wrenches. And the physical therapist said, oh, my, I could never get you to use your hand that much uh, by sitting in physical therapy. And all you're doing is thinking about how bad it hurts. But when there's a task at hand and um, 
I did have a good idea I saw just recently. Do any of your clients use the electro net, electric netting uh, for yes, rotational yep. grazing? It can be kind of a challenge to move it around. And this was an idea that was just a, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> a, a bracket clamped onto their wagon and they could set the posts on top and pull it along and the netting drags along behind go from post to post so that uh, somebody with poor mobility or the challenge of using two arms to lift and carry this stuff have you ever moved it around yeah it's quite uh quite a hassle trying to keep everything straight and untangled and yeah it's that, good. that would definitely help so we might have to see if maybe we can come up with how to duplicate this idea in a way that other people could copy the plans or something but i thought this was a interesting concept anyway so a couple more comments in the chat um wanda wants you to make more of these web farmer invention webinars because <laughs> they're awesome um, and then Garland was wondering if you'd share the slide separately from the recording because she has some farmers that wouldn't have the bandwidth. And um, Garland, I just want to let you know that this slideshow, this is the exact same one you guys used at the NTW, correct? Yes. Okay, so this slideshow is um, on the NTW website. If you go to the schedule page and just scan down until you see design by what you can find, you can get the slideshow there. Um, and then we'll save this recording um, to the website once um, we start saving the encore. I'm not sure exactly where on the website it'll be, I apologize. Um, but Paul will be saving it to the website soon. Uh, Garland mentioned the, you can get a four strand fence reel. It's a, a portable fence and that will work well for cattle and maybe probably goats too would stay in it uh, the electro net is so handy because it's essentially a woven wire fence it'll keep poultry and sheep uh, really well when they they might not otherwise obey a electric fence the electro net is really nice stuff if you can move it around it's really great for rotational grazing and i might just mention that as a, a system because assistive technology isn't just uh, tools and equipment, but it could be a system that enables somebody to do their work. And he said, doing rotational grazing, and I am just opening the gate and moving my sheep from one paddock to the next. What does it matter whether 60 sheep or 80 sheep go running past me to the next paddock? Mm -hmm. And he had enough land. He, he was an older gentleman and he said my wife will not let me take the trailer to the auction any longer because i kept bringing more sheep home and telling her it's just i can handle it so but the the rotational grazing system can be a real boon oh. so all right we have one last comment and then we are at the end of our time but candace candy said she has a client who has purchased at the overland electric cart and he said it was the best therapy for walking he's ever had. <laughs> so um, I also put the link in the chat for um, some survey questions. If everybody could please go to that link before they leave and answer a few questions to help us with future um, sessions. And let's see, Garland also, I recently learned about No Fence. It's coming to the US soon. And she put a link in there, no fence no slash en slash so that it's similar to invisible fencing that people use for dogs but it's for livestock so that's interesting yeah um so ned and kyle thank you so much for sharing with us um and you know if you want to do more of these obviously i think people are interested so we'll we'll work on that but if um, if everybody could please go to the link and answer survey questions we would appreciate it so thank you very much. Thank you.